Good morning, guys. Today I'm going to show you how you can create your own flight sim controller. Um, or you can use it for any sim you like. We're going to make use of some toggles. We're going to make use of some LEDs, as you can see. And it's totally up to you how many you're going to get. There are a few limitations, though. Um, but I will explain them later in the video. As you can see, lights are working. We can turn them on, off, etc. Um, so yeah, just follow along and see. If you have any questions, and if you do, please leave them in the comments below. So we need a breadboard, which uh, we'll explain later how it works, but we need an Arduino, a Leonardo or a Pro Micro. Pro Micro has the same pins as the Leonardo, um, but it doesn't have an external power input. But as you can see, the pins are easier to put into the Leonardo than the Pro Micro, while the Pro Micro is more oriented for soldering so what else do we need we need some toggles of course but it depends on how many you'd like in your own device um, how many you're gonna get and we need some wires to wire things up of course we need some resistors we need the two uh, 10k resistors and the 220r resistors And we need some LEDs. These are optional. Um, I prefer them just to see if something is on or off, um, especially if you start your flight and your system is still on. So in game, it will also turn on. So if you notice, we've got two states on these toggles. We have on or off, but we have three pins. We have the top one and the bottom one. And the red wire is where our power comes in. And the black one is where the power goes out. Could also use one of these cables, but then you need some insulating tape um, just to make sure that the black and the red wires don't touch, because then you can short the circuit, and that's something you would you would personally like to avoid. If you can, you can solder it. Um, that's my preference. Uh, if you have the tools laying around, or you can just pick one up quite cheaply. I believe my soldering station was um, thirty bucks. Um, as you can see, we have three pins, but we're only using two. And that's because we have on or off, um, and there's no, nothing in between. So if it's on, it's on, and the bottom part is off, as is expected, and vice versa. So we don't need to know if the bottom part is on, because we know that if the top part is off, the bottom part is automatically on. So how does our board look? Well, we have our inputs pins where we can put things in, uh, they can also be outputs, but we need to look for the 5 volts in the ground, and the ground is also can also be found on the other side, and we have some digital inputs where we can read our toggle states from later on in this video. Um, the ground can be found in two places, next to the 5 volts and opposite sides of the 5 volts, and I prefer to use the far, the furthest one just to make sure that the wires don't touch because then you can short your circuits once again. So just always avoid the red and the black wires touching. Um, the inputs is where we're going to check if the toggle is on um, and we need one input per toggle to see what's possible. So in this case, it means we can use 13 toggles with this board and this board, I believe, has 15 toggles possibilities. Uh, the 5 volt is called raw and ground can be found on top. And once again, next to 5 volts, of course. And um, here we have, let me see, it's 15, 16, 16 switches. So you have more possibilities for switches and they're both powered by micro USB. And this one also has the possibility to power it with a battery pack or on the electricity net, but we don't need it for a simple project like this. So let's get started. Um, we'll first explain the breadboard to you. Um, if you look at the rows and the pins, the middle rows are connected vertically. That means that, as I'm showing right now, that if you put something in here, the entire vertical row is connected to that LED. So as you can see now, the black wire is connected to the LED. And if we move it, it's 
no longer connected, even if it's in the same horizontal row, it's not connected, etc. There is a divide divider in the middle, and the power does not run through the divider. So if you want to bridge the gap to the other side, you actually need to place something in the middle. So in this case, if we put the LED in the middle, um, as I'm showing right here, you can see that we've breached the gap. So now the power will run from that side to the other side without interruption. Now on the top and the bottom parts is where we have horizontal lines. So from here on, it's from the left to the right uh, or vice versa and not top to bottom. So if you put our power in here and we do the same to the right, it's connected. Even though there is a divider, that doesn't matter. If we put it down there, it won't be connected. So what does this mean for our system? We can plug in our power. And our, on our system, it's the 5V, which can be found on this side. Sometimes it's a bit, you have to puzzle a bit on how to lay things around. And just to make things easier to see, we're going to put it on the bottom row because the red matches the same color and the plus, like it's positive for the energy coming in. Okay, and we do the same for the ground. Like I already mentioned, um, we're going to make use of the furthest ground available on the board. So that's on the top row or the right row, depending on how you hold the device. We're going to plug it into the blue line. So that's the second horizontal row. As you can see, <laughs> the, the wire is quite short. But um, once again, preferably a top ground and not the bottom ground. And on the Pro Micro, it's the same way around. As you can see, the lettering on it is the same ground, but this one, the left one is easier to fiddle around with and to plug the cables in while testing, while the right one is more a permanent solution. Um, so we have that wired up. Now let's get started with wiring up the rest. A bit of a closer look. As we're going to start, we first need to get power from our first horizontal row to one of the vertical rows. It doesn't matter which one you choose. It's a bit, uh, it depends on how many things you like to install on the board and how many space you've got. So now we've put in, we're going to put in the, the red cable on the same vertical uh, row. And as you can see, we got the power coming in. We, the power goes to the vertical row, and from the vertical row, it goes to the toggle switch. So now we've got our little flow going of energy to the switch. And now we're going to look at how to get it back to the board. So we're going to wire up the black wire. As you can see, they're on the same horizontal row, but that doesn't matter because it's in the middle part of the board. So they are not connected, and now we can connect it to the ground, going to the ground row, and going back to the ground on the board. So in theory, we already have a working circuit, but of course you can't see anything. Um, so we're going to put in an LED. And I've chosen to put it um, in the middle, just because... Then you have some more space and you will see later on why we need a bit of space in a circuit. So this is working, but as you can see, it's also bridging the gap. Going in, power comes through the toggle. But there's a big uh, thing to watch out for. And that's if we would turn this on, um, it would be very bright. That's for one. And for two... For starters, it could fry the LED quite quickly. So we need to address something to make sure that this doesn't happen. Um, I can show you what will happen if you turn it on right now. Um, let's see if we put in the power. And you will instantly see if I have my toggle on, what will happen. Okay, I don't have my toggle on. 
It's uh, the thing with these LEDs is they can be quite finicky and um, you have to fiddle around a bit by how to put them in because they don't have to be inserted all the way into the boards. Um, they can be quite lightly. So it's sometimes you have to see if all cables are put in properly or that there's somewhere this it's it's coming out or something like that. But these wires are all good. So I think it's the LED like I mentioned. Oh, there we go. And as you can see, it's quite blinding. Um, you, you won't actually get blind, but the thing is, the LED can't last very long doing this. But it's working like a toggle. If you turn it on, it goes on. If you turn it off, it goes off, etc. So that part is working. And now we have to make sure that it keeps working. So what we're going to do, we're going to make use of the 220R resistor and we're gonna place it um, in between the ground and the LED coming from the toggle to the LED so not the other side so if we turn it on now it's still very bright um, but the chances of it frying are slimmer oh. <laughs> and we make sure that the longevity of the LED is a bit more preserved. Um, there we go. So we have the power coming in, going through the resistor, going to the LED, going back to our board. A resistor is uh, just to make sure that it limits the power that can run through to the LED. So an LED isn't made for the full 5 volts that's coming in. So the resistor will take away some of that power to make sure that the LED gets only the amount it needs. So now we're going to take a 10K one. Um, and we need to place it at the end. But um, a thing about resistors as well is uh, most parts have their own schematics available on the internet. So I don't know them by head. You can calculate how many resistors you need. Um, but I'm no electrician, so I'm not going to give you any advice on that. I just recommend find it on the internet on what you need and stick with that there's also the possibility to look at the rings if you can't recognize how which power power uh, resistor it is you can look at the colored rings and they're all color coded so they should all match if needed so now we're going to see how we're going to let our system know that the toggle is on because the power runs through but the system still doesn't know what is happening so what we're going to need to do is put it in our one of our digital inputs or outputs it just depends on how you define it in the software but we're going to use it as an input so we're going to put it into the zero so now the power comes in goes through the resistor through the led sends a signal through the blue wire and goes back to ground after that there's a bit of a catch because once again we need a resistor to limit the power that goes through to our system, to our board, and it will also limit the power that will run to our LED. So we take one of the 10K ones this time. Last time we used it 220R. I also recommend to keep them um, taped together because they are quite easily to get lost. If you're ever tinkering on the board and you don't know what you're doing, I'd always recommend unplugging the boards just to make sure that you don't fry any LEDs, etc. Um, just to make sure that everything's fine. But in this example, because I don't want to replug it every time, and uh, I just stick to keeping it on. So now we have ground coming in, first resistor, LED, signal going out, second resistor and then we're going back to ground so how does this look in um, practice it would also mean that the power of the led if we look it, your, your screen doesn't turn blue instantly so this means it's it's a lot less brighter and the led can handle this for a much much longer time um, so you don't have to worry about having to go back in and change your uh, led on a later point so if you want to do the same for the second toggle, it's just repeating the same process. We need power going in, 
we need to power going back to the boards. Well, it isn't connected yet, but you get my point. If we like, we can use an LED. Uh, once again, the LED is optional. Uh, I prefer it because you have a visu visual representation if a toggle is on or off. And you don't have to rely on your software to tell you if it's on or off. So once again, resistor 220R, going in between the outputs of the toggle to the LED. <laughs> I always hate putting those little, little things in the board. And once again, we take the 10K for the other side. And we put in our measuring wire. And just for readability, I've gone with blue and white. Just so you know which input A is and which input B is. In my final product, I've used all white cables. Um, it's just up to you. You can alternate them just to have a clearer representation. Perhaps a top row that's going to be white, a bottom row that's going to be, be blue. It's up to your own sanity on what you can handle. Um, I went with all white, but it's, it doesn't really matter. The only color co consistency I would recommend is the blue and the black. Uh, blue, uh, red and the black. Because then you always know which the ground wire is and which is the 5 volts coming in. Because those will be the most important when it comes down to power and devices getting power or enough power. So now we have it hooked up. It's turning on. And our second button is turning on as well. And now we can go to our coding section. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.